so let's look at what exactly determines how much you can travel on a given amount of fuel and that one of the important parameters is the sfc so for an ic engine it is the brake specific fuel consumption okay and for uh, for a jet engine it is tsfc so in the brake in the vsfc or in the ic engine we are concerned about the brake or the shaft horsepower here we are concerned about the thrust produced directly this shaft horsepower as you know is consumed by a propeller so depending on whether you are concerned about power or thrust there are two different definitions for the specific fuel consumption so for jet engine aircraft we talk about tsfc or the thrust specific fuel consumption called as c subscript t which is the fuel flow w dot f fuel flow per unit thrust produced okay or amount of fuel consumed over amount of time per unit thrust for propeller aircraft we are concerned about power so we define sfc c as the fuel flow per unit power produced now is there a way to connect these two together is there a way by which we can define a single value for both the aircraft types so power will be thrust into velocity because at least in level flight thrust is equal to drag so p will be t into v so you notice now but p also has uh, now it is not just t into v because you have a efficiency also so eta p also will come so if you replace p with tv by eta p so then you can get an expression for ct equivalent jet sfc for a piston prop aircraft okay so the the equivalent jet sfc for piston prop is equal to the sfc for piston prop into v infinity by eta so this is used many a times in performance calculations and i'll explain to you why when i do the derivations in that so let's now look at some mathematical formulations for arriving at how much range an aircraft can travel so just as a point of memory the distance traveled on the given amount of fuel is called as a range we assume it is steady level flight so there is something called as a generalized range equation which is common to both the or all the aircraft type but at some point some deviations will come so for this purpose we divide the aircraft into two things everything other than fuel that is w1 weight and only fuel is wf so the aircraft gross weight w is equal to w1 plus wf simple right other than fuel is w1 and wf is only the fuel this wf consists of reserve fuel so all of it is not available to you for your mission planning but that distinction we will not worry right now we will assume that wf is basically is the fuel available to us now we make one very fundamental assumption that during flight we do not catch a passenger and throw him out or take somebody's suitcase and throw it out or don't open the payload bay and drop off something the only reason why an aircraft in this calculation reduces its weight is because fuel is consumed that means w1 will remain constant then and only then we can apply this equation so before we go ahead can you tell me which are the situations in which the aircraft fuel the aircraft weight reduces not only because of fuel consumption but also because of other things what are the scenarios in which yes give me a scenario in 
operation of an aircraft so when the military transport aircraft airdrop uh, vehicles bomb so don't call them transport aircraft then the word transport means nothing is dropped but but i know military cargo aircraft or military aircraft which drop things off for them we can't calculate the range by this formula agree but i'll not use the word transport okay the word transport basically means transporting people without dropping them so it's okay or cargo without dropping it but cargo aircraft or military aircraft agreed bombers fighters if they lose anything we can't use it that's one reason okay any other any other scenario in aviation where we can't apply this equation because the aircraft weight during flight changes for reasons other than fuel consumption think about it yes uh, maybe in dive cooler the weight is also changing why weight is changing uh, we have seen that that uh, that mv square by r hmm. that part is coupled into the weight correct but mv square bar mein m remains constant in fact even v remains constant you can have a constant velocity dive pull out so the aircraft weight will not change during dive pull out aircraft weight will remain the same any other scenario in one class you told about the second world war plane and that is uh, landing gear and all will be dropped okay that's right that is just at take off so that's okay technically speaking yes you drop the landing gear just at take off that is one one very special aircraft agreed answer is not wrong but there is one more mission that is regularly flown in which w1 changes air to air refueling when you acquire fuel from from aircraft or when you give fuel to somebody is not consumed is only transferred so when we do air to air refueling or when we have bombing or drop off payload you cannot use this equation for all other applications you can use it so we will assume that change in the w with time is equal to change in the wf with time i am going to put this in the formula to derive the expression another assumption will be no headwind no tailwind so stationary atmosphere and no acceleration yeah that in some case we can see that pilot uh, used to dump the fuel uh, that is at so the that is at the end of flight when yes, you sir. want to suddenly reduce the weight so in that case also wf changes while the fuel is not being consumed. exactly but you have already reached the destination so you are not at a stage when that will affect the range so either when you drop landing gear in the beginning or when you drop uh, fuel at the end you are doing it not to increase or decrease the range but for some other reason so during flight during study level flight the basic reason would be only one of those two i agree with you if you can also suddenly dump fuel at the end so if you look at study level flight and if you look at stationary atmosphere and if you look at a situation in which the change of the weight is only because of fuel consumption then only then we can apply so let us start with the fundamental definition of the thrust specific fuel consumption so sfc or ct now i am using ct because i want to talk about both the aircraft together the reason is this is generalized range equation it doesn't say applicable only to turbo prop or piston prop or turbo jet or turbo fan or a pulse jet it's applicable to all aircraft types so the thrust specific fuel consumption basically is rate of consumption of fuel divided by the thrust and the rate of consumption of fuel basically is nothing but at any particular instant it is actually dwf by dt okay so this gives us an expression that dt the in a small elemental time dt you have a change in wf upon sfc into time and because the change is negative because we lose fuel we have put a minus sign so this becomes our basic building block 
dt is equal to minus dwf by c dot by ct. So, let us stick it and copy and paste it here and now we start looking at the manipulation. So, first manipulation that I will do will be to replace let us see one by one what do I do you just see what I do. So, first I say that the distance travelled a small distance travelled in the elementum time t will be v infinity into t. The assumption here is that v infinity is constant study flight. So, at least in that small element of time t we do not assume change in v and therefore, the distance travelled in time dt is v infinity into dt. Now, dt is already given there. So, I can replace dt with minus dwf by ct. How have I done this? Because minus dwf by ctt is defined as dt. In other words, ds is equal to minus v infinity dwf by ct. Now, dwf is basically dw. Do you agree? Change in the fuel weight is change in the aircraft weight. So, we replace it. So, we get ds is equal to v infinity by ct w by t dw by w. Now, what we have done here is we have multiplied and divided by w. Is it permitted? Because w is non zero. So, it is permitted. And now the last thing that we do is because it is level flight, therefore t will be equal to d and l will be equal to w. So, what I am going to do is because l equal to w, the w in the numerator I will replace with l with your kind permission and the t on the bottom I will replace by d. So, that is it this is the elemental equation or sorry generalized range equation for any aircraft the distance travelled in a small elemental time dt is given by the product of the velocity of the aircraft during that time assumed to be constant divided by the thrust specific fuel consumption into the lift over drag into dw by w. So, now we start integrating this over a range. So, the total range will be from the aircraft weight equal to w0 uh, w1 to w0 from initial condition to the final condition. Now, this minus sign I have consumed in changing the integration limits. So, instead of putting minus w0 to w1, I have put w1 to w0. So, from this point onwards, now there are many, many paths available. So, this particular equation has a very interesting name, it is called as a Breguet range equation. What is special about this e equation? Number 1, it is valid only for study level flight. Number 2, it is valid for any engine type provided you use the equivalent thrust SFC. If the engine is a jet engine, then you directly use CT W dot F by T. If it is a piston prop, turbo prop, you use a converted value. From this point onwards, you will have different paths depending on what is assumed constant. So, the most common assumption is a constant altitude flight, flight at which the value of L by D remains constant. So, that means a constant angle of attack flight. You know that corresponding to any angle of attack, the aircraft has a given value of CL. There is a alpha CL curve for the aircraft. So, for any alpha value there is a CL and for that CL value you have CD is equal to CD naught plus KCL square. 
CL is constant, K is constant 1 by pi into A into E that does not change and CD naught is also a constant that is a function of the aircraft shape, geometry etc. So, as long as the angle of attack of a flight during flight is fixed, it may not remain fixed, but as long as the pilot flies at a given angle of attack, you have a corresponding velocity. So, level flight at a constant angle of attack, one can assume that CT does not change. CT is a function of the engine behavior and the engine consumption of fuel does not change if you have the same density. So, if V is constant, CT is constant, L by D is constant, then all of them can come outside the integration sign, then R will be only V infinity L, V infinity by CT L by D integral of W1 to W0 del W upon W and that will become log of weight ratio. So, that is one very simple expression, okay. that is what it is. But remember, you may not have this condition always. For example, there is one condition of flight in which velocity may remain constant but altitude may not remain constant. Do you remember I talked, talked about cruise climb condition in which as the aircraft is losing the weight, you slowly increase the altitude. So, during that time this cannot be acceptable because CT will not remain same. As density changes, CT will change. So, you may have a constant V, constant L by D, but CT changing. So, any combination of these three parameters is permitted and therefore, three different types of ranges also are there and there are three different equations for those ranges, but we will not go into that direction because this is not a class in aircraft performance where you want to go into detail. So, we will look at only a fundamental expression, okay. So, let us see. So, for a propeller aircraft, we use that relationship C t is equal to C v infinity by eta p. So, r will be eta p r by C L by D log of weight ratio. So, now if I ask you a question, let us say I would like to maximize the range, what should I do? Tell me, it is right there in front of you. First thing is, fly at a condition at which eta p is maximum. Second thing is minimize the SFC. Third thing is maximize the fuel capacity by increasing W0 by W1 and also fly at maximum L by D. There is one particular angle of attack at which the aircraft acquires maximum L by D. That angle is approximately 3 to 4 degrees for most aircraft. So, the pilot will fly at that condition. But when you fly at 3 or 4 degree angle of attack, it is quite possible that the aircraft may be also inclined which is not convenient for passengers. So, there are many ways of doing this. One is you set the incidence angle of the aircraft itself so that the aircraft is horizontal when you have the optimum L by D. Okay, so, let us look at propeller driven aircraft. So, we can derive a condition. Now, this is something that I would like you to derive yourself, okay. If you just look at the board and say yes, then you will be in a real soup. So, it is a very simple expression which I would like you to do as homework. So, I will just show you to you back again. Basically, you have to derive the condition for L by D maximum. What is the CL at L by D maximum? So, that can be really calculated and if you know this L by D maximum you can put it there. So, the at what speed should you fly? So, that your range is maximum for turboprop you can estimate by this particular expression. So, here k is the induced drag uh, factor. For a jet propelled aircraft the only influence is L by D. So, one can easily derive the expression. So, it is very messy, it is not a very simple expression. So, 
L by D alone is not important because V also is there. So, you have to actually optimize V L by D. Okay. 